welcome to Young Money. I'm Nozi Pombanjwa. We're coming to you from Sharm al Sheikh in Egypt, and this is on the back of the Africa 2017 conference. Now, I've had the honor of being here in 2016, but I must say, in 2017, Africa's young entrepreneurs have absolutely come out in their numbers. And of course, it is as Young Money, we couldn't pass up the opportunity to chat to some of them to understand what their businesses do, the impact that they dream of having on the continent and so we went out and in search of some of Africa's youngest voices in the business landscape and joining me now is a Guam Haberugira I hope I've said your name correctly but Guam is the founder of youthworks.africa and so Guam tell us a little bit about your business which of course is a business that comes out of Rwanda YouthWorks.Africa uh, is simply a nap for business planning, collaboration when you need help, you need mentorship, and funding. Mm -hmm. So you start uh, collaborating, you start uh, planning, uh, having uh, 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 knowledge that you'll get funding at the end of the day. So why did you decide to focus on creating a platform that not only gives information but allows young people to start planning around their businesses? What is the gap that you identified? Yeah, I have spent the last 10 years working into banking and uh, I have been uh, uh, in 20 African countries which I had uh, a responsibility for, working uh, for an European bank. And uh, I've come to realize that it is the same problem everywhere. Banks are saying we are very liquid, which they are, and they are saying on the same time that they don't see bankable projects. Right. On, on the other side, when you talk to young people on the street, they will tell you, yes, we know what we'll do to, to make our own employment, yeah. but we don't get the funding. So yeah. there is a mismatch, liquidity lacking for projects and uh, ideas uh, yeah. uh, lacking for funding. So right. we, we saw that a gap. We think that if we fill that correctly, we'll be hoping a lot uh, to really uh, make the gap towards self-employment and, and self-sustainment. And of course, uh, this issue of uh, this liquidity gap uh, that Guam talks about is very real. We often hear the story that the ideas are plenty in Africa, uh, but the funding isn't there, and yet the banks are saying the funding is there. It's just we're looking for bankable ideas. So the, the, the opportunity then lies around the bankability of the idea. So how does your business improve the bankability of the ideas that young entrepreneurs come with yeah thank you um, it is a really very simple what the technology today allows mm. so you can use artificial intelligence to know to know what you want really to plan mm. you can uh, um, you can really do uh, 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 you cannot not only give a template to people so that they know what they need to plan but you can also support them with content that are really very really specific to what yeah. they wanted to achieve and I think doing so, though, they, you should make it in a way that they plan without knowing that they're planning, actually. Yeah. And at the end of the day, get automatic funding quotation. So that's what it should do. It should increase the efficiency on the side of the banks. Yeah. It should reduce the footwork on the side of the applicant, which should make Africa work. So this is how we were, this is how our perspective on that. Well, I can imagine so many young entrepreneurs would really give anything to have an automatic funding quotation. And of course, if the quotation isn't uh, doesn't meet your funding needs, you know that you need to do a little bit more work uh, to make sure that you are able to increase your funding. But there's something that Guam has said that I think is quite interesting, and that is he used to be an investment banker. So let's go back. You know, why would you then take the risk of leaving a job that many would give an arm and a leg for and decide to take the much harder path of being an entrepreneur? I believe from what I'm doing, it might sound crazy <laughs> for anyone else, uh, but uh, I do it, uh, I have done a favor to myself because I believe that the youth of Africa is the, a gold mine everyone is not looking at. So it's, um, we believe in that, we put money in that. I'm yeah. not alone, we are with two, two other partners. Yeah. We are in a team of uh, 80 people now, and uh, we, are, we are looking for to, to, to scale and integrate many banks as we go, mm -hmm. and allow each and every bank, uh, every um, analyst in a bank, be able to process tenfold of what he has been able to do. Yeah. 
while identifying and making a proper differentiation between the risks. Right. So this is what we, we are bringing. And bringing so we uh, see your investment banking insights coming in uh, to your business. And so as they say that every experience counts, nothing is ever a waste of time. But Graham, what I, I really want to know is that it can't have all been plain sailing. It can't all have been easy. What has been the toughest thing about being an entrepreneur that you've experienced thus far? Yeah, the toughest thing I believe is identifying who you can really and reach that person who you really need and how you can reach him. So I, I, I see that there is no other way around. You've got to take the pen of going through many persons, through many steps and accept that this is the way of, uh, of taking it. And this is the same message uh, we, we are giving to, to the users of our platform, of, of our app. We are telling them the app is a, soft, a, soft, a software intelligence. It's going to help you. It's going to adapt it to your needs, so everyone can use it, from uh, SMEs to to to, uh, uh, to retail businesses. So it can work for everyone. But tech can help us. But we still have to do. I'm quite keen to hear from Kuam. What did you think of what uh, President Kagame shared with us? If you were to give an assessment of how your president showed up at uh, the Youth Entrepreneurship Day, uh, what would that assessment be? One thing is the market, another thing is enabling uh, environment. With the confidence that he is, he is there, I, I decided to start with Rwanda because I know that proving the concept there will be much easier. And this is because of him. He has a leadership not only for Rwanda, but I believe it is transcending now towards Africa. When we are here, hearing from other Af uh, African uh, people, they are saying we like what you do in Rwanda. Yeah. So we, it has its have value, so we yeah. are using it. So you feel affirmed in a way that you've, uh, it, at the very least, your, your base market is getting something right. But now one of the key things that we did speak about on that panel was how do we support young people to grow their businesses beyond just their own countries so that they can actually have partnerships that transcend borders and uh, have businesses that are actually playing in the region. Is this an ambition? Uh, for YouthWorks.Africa, is this something that you're looking to do? And if so, what do you think it's going to take to get there? President Al-Sisi said we need to support them. We need to, to support the young entrepreneurs. And the President Kagame said, yes, they should also understand we are not giving them a free pass. Yeah. So, and a discussion around me that comes to your question I arose. And that discussion uh, was, what did he say? I believe that he had, he's right. It is up to us as entrepreneurs not to see the government as, as the sun or, or, or rain we cannot yeah. influence. We've got to do due process on the, yeah. on, on the bottom up, but we have to take, to trust in ourselves and go to the leadership and tell them what we want. We need to make our voice heard if, if that's what is going to make our business successful. Mm -hmm. So I believe that as an entrepreneur, the owners is on us. Yeah. To uh, Guam's point, uh, President Kagame spoke a lot about uh, building trust between young people as well as the, the, the economy and the state machinery and banks and financial services. And one of the points that he, he said was that young people need to remember that as much as you expect policies and regulation and, um, and things to work in your favor, that young people needed to put in the work themselves. And I think that's been a resounding theme. Now I want to go back to your business and ask you about the dreams ahead and what you want to achieve uh, going ahead. Just give us a sense of your five-year plan. If you and I were back here in Sharm el uh, in 2022, I think that would be, what would we be talking about? In 2020, retail credit would have become a, uh, a media, a, 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 a consumer thing. It will be a product that can be marketed in any place. You'll be able not only to source funding from your local market, but if your local market can take that, anyone in, in the world will be able and eager to take that risk, be it commercial banks, yeah. be it venture, business angels, or even individuals 
who don't see themselves as a, business, a professional business angel. And on top of that, in 2020, if we do our work in the proper way, you'll be having stars investors. Today we have YouTube, YouTube stars. Yeah. So in 2020, you'll be having a situation where people, stars investors, get followers because they know to pick the right sport, the right investment. Right. This is the vision we well, want to achieve. Th that's an incredible vision. So can you imagine investors on the African continent competing for followers because of the investment that they've made? And this, of course, is a big challenge because you're also saying that African investors are going to increasingly look for opportunities in Africa. And this is going to be not even a trend, but it's just the way things are going to be. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to hold you to that. And five years from now, I hope this is a exactly what you were talking about. Just a final word from you now, Guillaume. If you were to give uh, young entrepreneurs across the African continent who are watching the show a piece of advice about how to start your business and follow through on your dreams, what would that piece of advice be? In my experience, I can only give what I have experience as, a, uh, as, a, uh, as, as experience going through this. We have, um, I have been working on this since two years. and. Uh, Number one, speak out your idea, mm. whatever it is. Mm. And don't have a fear, anyone stealing your idea. Because that person, the very person who is ready to steal your idea, yeah. is busy with a thousand other things. Yes. So speak out to get uh, feedback. That's number one. Number two, what do you do with that feedback? Learn, use it to get better. Yeah. So the more you speak, the, the more you get feedback, the yeah. quicker you get better yes. and the better the chances are there. Well, thank you very much. It's about speaking out and actually sharing your idea, listening to the feedback and using the, that feedback to get even better. I don't think that there could be any better advice. Thank you very much to Guillaume for sharing with us his business and his dreams uh, for his business. And of course, this is all happening at Africa 2017, where the world, the continent, and certainly the continent's entrepreneurs have gathered to talk about the Africa that we want. Thank you so much. Uh, we're going to take a short break. When we come back we're bringing you more young money don't go away Welcome back to Young Money. If you've just joined us, we're joining you from Sham al Sheikh in Egypt and we're attending Africa 2017. And as we were saying in the first half of the show, last year I had the privilege of being here, but this year Africa's entrepreneurs, young entrepreneurs in particular, have come out in absolute numbers. In the first half of the show, we've met a phenomenal uh, young entrepreneur who is working around creating information and platforms for young entrepreneurs to start and build their businesses and so this idea of a liquidity mismatch no longer exists. Now I have the opportunity of sitting down with the founder and the CEO of uh, Captain Foods Limited. His name is Onya Kachi Ekezie. He has been a phenomenal friend of mine on this journey thus far but uh, most importantly he is running a, a company that is really redefining um, accessible and convenient food not only in Nigeria but hopefully for the entire continent. Tell, tell us a little bit about Captain Foods and what the business aims to do. Captain Foods is a food processing company I set up in 2015 and uh, we launched into the market end of 2016 and we're focused on ready-to-eat foods. Mm. Uh, we set up a factory in, uh, in Lagos and uh, we work with farmers you know so our, our first product is Captain Ready Stew, which is basically a blend of tomatoes, onions, and peppers. Mm. And we, we, we came up with a recipe that forms a very nutritious stew that 99% of Nigerians mm. love to eat. Yeah. And we found an innovative way of actually packaging the food. And uh, it's gotten a very good reception from the market. And that's what we do. So Onye, if I've now picked up a sachet, um, how long does it take me to prepare? What do I need for this to be the meal for the evening? Yeah, so that's, that's the, one of the unique propositions that we, that we uh, were able to address in the yeah. market because 
we, we, the idea is that within two minutes you should be consuming a meal. So what, what, we're, done, what, we're, what we're saying to customers is that you can boil your rice, which takes maybe three to four minutes to yeah. boil your rice, and then you can just warm the stew up in, a, in, a, in, a, in the microwave and you're ready to eat. And you can just get a piece of chicken and it's ready to go. So it's a very quick meal. So how was this received though in the Nigerian market? Uh, this idea that you could actually have a convenient fast stew because I think when we think about stew, we think about something that takes quite a lot of time to prepare. What was the reception by the market? Right. Um, so it depends on the meal as well. You know, it depends if you want a quick meal with rice or you want to make jollof rice, it takes a little bit longer, but it's the whole idea is a, is a ready to eat stew. But the point is, a lot of people couldn't believe it actually that a stew could be packed in the manner that, that, it, that it is. And I think that that's what innovation does. You got to get people to think differently. And I, I, the focus for us is to get people to try the product because yeah. we produce that, we know how it tastes, but a lot of people don't know how it tastes. So we have to create all the, a lot of awareness on tastings and and promotions and things like that. And with the moment that people tasted it, they bought it. And then that was, the, that was the, the good thing about what we were able to achieve. How did you decide which flavor to go with first? Because I mean, I'm sure you'd had to think very carefully about what is gonna resonate with consumers quickly so that you can then build on other flavors. So what we did was that we got a food technologist who's actually yeah. a very good cooker. And she came up with a recipe that, you know, that most, people would, would enjoy it. And we, what we did is that we actually did our market research. We did taste before we launched. We had focus groups on, 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 uh, that came together and tasted the product before we actually went So went into the market. So I think you have to do that as, a, as an entrepreneur. You have to know who your market is and make sure you test the market before you you, you, come in, you, you invest on a commercial scale because yeah. you don't want to get it wrong on a commercial scale. Mm. And of course the competitive landscape must have been a very a key consideration. Mm. Being something that a product that's fairly new in the market, mm. um, what was your reading of the competitive landscape? Well, you know, you have a lot of people who play in a, in a, in a tomato value chain, yeah. but not so much on a ready-to-eat uh, stew. Right, you have a lot of um, you know players in the market for tomato paste and tomato sauce and things like that, but it's not a finished product. And so we we went into we went we took it a step further and created a finished product. So you don't have to start from the beginning of fresh tomatoes and paste and things like that. Yeah, it gets you to the to the final. We went straight to the final product. And I think that was a unique proposition for us. And what does this mean for your pricing? Because I mean, I'm sure if you're coming into the market and there isn't a very clear pricing benchmark, you kind of have to like develop what the pricing uh, benchmarks going to look like how did you go about doing that yeah i mean it, it, it's it's unbelievable when you look at the current market demographic of nigeria talking about over 180 million people and you're saying in you know in x amount of years you would have one in four people be nigerian you have to be excited as a producer or manufacturer in nigeria because you look at the, the you look at the market and you realize the market is is huge now it's going to, it's, it's going to be even you know, however many X, you know, in, in, in the future. So you have to be very excited. You have to position yourself, your brand, to be ready to actually take on this, on this sort of challenge and, and meet the demand. So, and then we hope that we build a, a good enough product base to be able to cater to this market and, and, and something that we're very excited about, actually. Oh, that's, I mean, and that's obviously something that we're going to be watching. Hopefully you and I will still be alive in 2050 yes. <laughs> to see that it comes to light. And, 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 and as we just begin to wrap, I mean, I think it would be interesting to, to find out what are you most excited about as a young entrepreneur in Africa? You're steeped in business. You've had the experience of more than one sector. Um, and, you, and you're obviously excited around the big macroeconomic uh, uh, picture. But are there new sectors, new opportunities that you're itching to get into? Yes, I'm very, very excited about the tech sector. Mm. You, know, uh, you know, like I said, my, my, my degree was in computer science. Mm. And even with my current business, I'm still looking for a way to make the business tech enabled, yeah. right? Because it's an area that I'm very, very excited about. And I think that once I'm very, once uh, I've built capital to a certain, to a certain level, yeah. I, I'll be willing to you know, make some investments in, in the tech space. And mm -hmm. I think that it's an area that is very ripe for investment in Nigeria. A lot of young entrepreneurs are coming up. You know, uh, Facebook has, well, Mark Zuckerberg make, made a huge investment in Andela in Nigeria. And it shows the, the kind of confidence, you know, a person like that has in, on the market. And, I, and, I, and, I, and I'm, I'm very bullish on that space. The tech space is a, is a huge space I think that can really take off. And um, I'm really itching, but I want to be very focused on what I'm doing now. Yeah. I think this is very, very, uh, it's a lot of work yeah. and a lot of hard work, so I need to be focused on it. But I think in the future is an area that it's an itch I would like to scratch in the future. Well, there you have it. That is an itch that he would like to scratch into the future. 
Thank you so much for making the time to join us on Young Money. Coming to you from Sharm al Sheikh in Egypt, we're hanging out with some of Africa's coolest and most promising entrepreneurs, and a lot of them are already running fantastic businesses that are shaping their own local context. But these are businesses that have the the potential to break across borders, become regional businesses, and indeed become continental enterprises. And we can say that it started here on Young Money. Thank you so much for joining us. Remember that. If you want the young money to come to you, it's really, really easy. All you need to do is follow me on Twitter. It's at the real nosy or at CNBC Africa. Until next time, it's goodbye.